Hello, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm the Doctor, and with me again is Songbird Shadowheart. And she decides to, uh, <laughs> so yeah, she decides to be absolutely silent and make me a liar. <laughs> so as we left off, another day passes and it's time for the Literature Club to meet again. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Doctor. Yeah, I say hi. Ah, oh, looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I'll save you. I see. Ah, oh, it's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. I guess it's always the simple things with you, isn't it? Anyway. Speaking of which... I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Uh, th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, say I? Uh, why that all of a sudden? No reason really, I just wanted to look at it. Okay, I'm being weird. Uh... Sayori nervously retrieves her, retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see them right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? Ah, simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to go for a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money, so I'd lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. Ah, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, then that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in a book as always. Aha! Uh -huh. I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell the doctor, <laughs> tell the doctor to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. <laughs> <laughs> I scared him with that. Did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Mm. <laughs> I really like you. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. Fair uh, warning. We still haven't slept. This is <laughs> just another continuation from the first recording. It doesn't happen much. But it's a fun side of you. Yep, the butt is always a fun side of you. I mean, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I trust me, sweetheart. I can't think that because I just did. <laughs> There's no way you could think that. <sighs> You're right, though. See, even she agrees with me. The butt is always a fun side. <laughs> I did something bad, and now I have to accept the retribution. The no, it's, it should be retribution. She just messed it up. See? Retribution? <laughs> <laughs> the hat. Still coming from you, Siori. I guess that's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't that? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Don't let it fool you. Sarah knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys that she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But that... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. True, but I would have come faster if there were muffins involved. <laughs> so I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Uh oh. Come on, give me a little bit more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Did I just pimp slap her? Yeah. Oh, I don't know where something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Um, a, a cookie? What? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. I thought I slapped the shit out of her for that one. <laughs> My god, I was about to feel I really, really bad. <laughs> I was about to feel really, really bad. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this game. <laughs> Actually, the one most worked. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that with straight face. I was just going to give it to you. That's what you're going to give it to you, huh? But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. I was totally, it was totally real seeing your reaction to it. <laughs> Natsuki. It's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Oh god. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayori suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> 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 You're going through a lot of just one cookie. <laughs> it's now, your fault for making a sound like that. I know. Natsuki <laughs> takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours looks good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Please. But just can't be choices. But yours is <coughs> not great. Yeah, why do you think I did with that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sailor so gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and then wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I thought it, I thought it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Shaori off of her. Mm. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Oi! Oh! <laughs> Did you see us on the desk with that? Mm -hmm. Mouthful, Sayori trots the way to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell us how... Oh? Natsuki glances around. Monica is in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica overboard? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being oh. late? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Um, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do to tell. She's pretty popular after all. Uh, you don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Ah, she's off getting the nasty on with some boy toy. <laughs> she's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> I don't know. That Yuri is kind of cute. Oh, doctor. And um, 
<laughs> That's me. Oh, small, small. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there uh, you are. <laughs> I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Uh, Monica cho chose the ch chose the club over her boyfriend, after all. You're so <laughs> strong-willed. <laughs> oh god. The boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah! Never mind that. What held you up, anyway? Uh... Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Hmm. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Doctor. Monica smiles sweetly as she thrusts her breasts at me. <laughs> ah! I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. <laughs> and I'd really love to the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Ah, no, not really. I chose to leave our series mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone's already settled down. Siri somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet again. Hi, <laughs> Yuri. Oh? Uh, -huh. uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Ah, if that's the case. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. As my screen goes blank. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that I can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. I agree. Mm hmm Definitely. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri yeah, stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri yeah, hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll get going. We'll get go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moved really contrasts with her speaking mannerisms. Oh, of course, Doctor. That's oh, what you're looking at. I, I have to go ahead and just make sure that I understand somebody, um... It's too late at night. Yes, I'm looking at her ass. That's all I'm doing, really. Especially because of her long leg. Oh, I, I did not even read that part. It was sick. Right. Yuri appears elegant and methodical. <laughs> Wow. Okay. May I have the water pitcher? Just, just take it. Yeah. 
Thanks. I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm? Where are you two going? Where are you two off to? Eh? I just knew I was going to make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling up the water pitcher. Oh, okay. Sorry, I j was just a bit curious. A little over curious, aren't you? That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Right. Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want me to tell... Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve the doctor in club activities? She really got brave all of a sudden? Uh... Ah... Uh, my mouth gapes. I... Stop thrusting your breasts at me, I'm already looking at a different pair. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Thank you! Now walk away so I can look at the other breasts. <laughs> Let's go then, Doctor. Uh... Yuri quickly exits the room, and I follow. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. Mm-hmm. Once in the hallway, she suddenly... She suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Hillary. I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? Now, Yuri, I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Doctor, how come when, even when I do something bad, you're being so nice to me? It's because it's who I am, really. <laughs> Honestly, you're cute, He's... and I don't know, just because. <laughs> Nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light sh rain shower into a hurricane. <laughs> ah. N no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Uh, um... Yuri lifts her head. <clears throat> Doctor, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, though. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Ah, anyway! Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walked to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Doctor, do you like oolong tea? Oh, that sounds amazing right about now. Yes, it does. Ah, uh, yeah! <laughs> Anything is fine. <laughs> Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to <clears throat> 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only become more impressed. Hmm, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided that I would 
try expressing myself a bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do when it's you who's around anyway. Ah, well, that's great, you know? Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Doctor. Ah, of course. It's very endearing. Of course, that's... Well, Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. <laughs> I'll watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Doctor, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Dad, where's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. Really? Yeah, carrying my large rack and all, you know. Oh, well, I didn't, um... <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, that, okay, yes! I can read with my back against the wall. <laughs> Rather than bending <laughs> from at my desk. Uh -huh. Sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. God. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder what that is. It's mostly because of her big old. No. <laughs> oh. It's most likely because my. Uh. My. Right. <laughs> I was right. Your posture! Right? I always hunched over like that while reading. <laughs> yes! I have terrible reading posture. <laughs> <laughs> So that's why <coughs> we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Oh, I have some chocolate as well. There's a small bag of chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I sit then against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading posture as the last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Hmm? Yuri slides closer till our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Oh, Yuri answered my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to make sure I'm not accidentally touching her chest. <laughs> Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. I bet she hasn't. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has suddenly faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. Ugh. After a few minutes, I've managed to finally relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Oh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, uh, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Eh? You sure? Well... If I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book in it, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yumi opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any hard over time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. I take another chocolate. And I hold it up to Yuri, but she doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Mm -hmm. Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... 
Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm just what happened. Um... Doctor... Just sorry! I, I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, uh, that's... Well... You, you were just helping. That's something that friends do. Right? Yeah, I mean, sure, not, um, not really in this kind of context, but, yeah, that's all I was. Yeah, then you didn't need to stop or anything. Right, have I see. <laughs> this situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. And then she vomits into the book! <laughs> How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breath. Her breath scissors. <laughs> breath scissors. How in the world do you say that without making it sound like I'm saying her breasts? Oh, well, probably not saying breasts and bra saying breaths. Ah, buddy. Ah, I raise my arm. Ah. Uh. Like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Ah, you <laughs> son! That was just... It was getting to the good part! Okay, everyone. Patch. <laughs> ah. Uh. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Doctor, can you help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Y yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. Oh. Uh, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Alright, mm. well, we've just had a very intense moment with Yuri, so let's go ahead and share our poem with her. Yes. <clears throat> let's see what you've written today. And immediate vomit. More vomit. <laughs> Oh my. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Doctor. This one might be... This might... This one might even be better than yesterday's. That's okay, I read that like five times myself. <laughs> what the fuck is she saying? How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Ah, you know, I just kind of clicked the random words on the page and hoped that I would go ahead and win your love. <laughs> just yesterday I was telling you about the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job of explaining. <coughs> I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? Reading a poem? I thought you did that all the time. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Why well, this game is too meta? I don't know. That's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. <coughs> Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid. Not at all. But seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. 
and besides, people would just laugh at me. No, that's not true at all. Do you really think that? Again, <laughs> Yuri nods. <coughs> huh. Even your close friends? <laughs> <laughs> Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Ah, anyway. Do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you. Aww. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as a... as an... Unordinary as an ordinary human. I give the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread my hungry curiosity, the raccoon my urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the lights of, raccoon, of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Well, perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions on the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me the excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlovian conditioning. Pavlovian conditioning. I assess the bread and feed myself again. Oh dear. Um, oh wow. She. Oh, uh, this is very deep. Yeah. At first I thought she meant the raccoon was, you know, me since I was new, but no. No, but she's excited. wanting more. She's a cutter. Uh, the, the bread is her. Mm-hmm. Oh dear. Um... I was a little more daring this, with this one than yesterday's. Yeah, sweetheart, I noticed. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in more unusual hobbies. We were it's right. the sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. We are right, oh my goodness. Yeah, oh dear. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. The sad part is, in the high school days, that's likely true. Yeah, that's probably true. Especially in this day and age. Yeah. Do you have anything like that, Doctor? Hmm. Do I? I might may masturbate more than a chimpanzee, but you know, <laughs> that's probably the worst. Sheesh! Well, I mean, you know... I don't really actually... Well, no, I do have my English muffins in the bottom. And muffins. And a tub of butter. I really <laughs> like butter. Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel 
like everyone has a little something like that. But best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. Well, true, but at the same time, you know, just don't take it too far, sweetheart. It's just kind of scary. Yeah, it's I mean, getting a little unnerving. I mean... After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Well, to each their own, but just be careful with that one. You do some new damage. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Of course. You're good at a lot of things. Not really, I just managed to flip my way along. Writing? Listening? There really aren't many people like you, Doctor. Ah, there's plenty of them like me, if not better. Ah, that's exaggerating a little bit. <laughs> it's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable comfortable sharing my writing, but now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. No. And you're really, and you're to thank for it. Yummy. That's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness you no, excuse me. Your timidness seems to disappear. Alright, let's go ahead and get the rest out. Sorry. <sighs> Vomit. Oh. I like this one, Doctor. It has some nice feelings in it. Oh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Um, let me think. I don't know. She's way easygoing, isn't she? I guess I like them both. Hey, yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. It makes me feel things when it must be good, a good poem. I'm not sure exactly that's how it works, but okay. Hey, and I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the whole thing. So, yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah. Me neither. You are the good little one. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aww. Uh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Actually, I want to go ahead and write more for Yuri. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. You're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Uh huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep that in mind. Ah, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's mm. the word I'm looking for? Emotional? Bittersweet. Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy, and things that are sad. Happy and sad. <laughs> I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Um... I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, 
A sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a happy, make a nice happy rainbow. Sorry, that's an unexpectedly payoff and poetic. Uh, it is. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Doctor. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Ah, okay. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. What? Oh my. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams, okay? Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like little bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and pull from the and pluck one out. It's warm and tiny. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on a shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends, each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. And deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends looked through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something, but all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. Whoa. Oh dear. She really is depressed. Yeah. She keeps uh, pushing out all her happy feelings to her friends and everything, but every time she tries to act happy to someone, it feels like it's just empty. Mm hmm. And she knows that others are trying to help her to reach out to her, but she doesn't hear it. Right, she don't want to see it though. She wants to... She's used no. to bottling them up, so... Well, no, it's... She, cause she sees it. She sees them all shouting and pleading. She, all I hear is echo. It's not that she doesn't want to hear it. It's not registering. It's not hmm. getting through. Holy crap. That's right, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> hey, Yori, did you really write this? My screen just went blank. Yep. Uh, hang on. There we go. <laughs> of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going... gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a... Well, a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I'm starting to wonder if that's such a good thing. Yeah, I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. <laughs> uh, creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being cheerful. Ow, oh, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself in this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Hmm. Writing is like magic. No, friendship is magic. You got it wrong. <laughs> You've gotten pretty passionate about this, haven't you? I'll help you keep it up. Yeah. 
Writing is the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Huh. Oh. Don't get ahead of yourself. Sarah's <laughs> always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping into a mouth no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. <coughs> Alright. Come on, midget. Bring it on. <laughs> huh. I liked the last one better. That's because there was nothing for you in this one. Ah, really? Well, that I can tell you were a little more daring with this one. It was really not good enough for that look. It felt flat. That might be true, but I wanted to try something different. I'm still figuring this all out. I mean, I, like, I always like poems that aren't trying too hard. I heard when people try to sound fancy, I bought it just by using a ha 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 that felt flat. <laughs> Meaning just by using a more complicated language. It just meant it simple, cute, and to the point. Yuri's head is over heels for this cryptic nonsense, but I see right through that BS. Ha! Oh my. Not can you really work so hard for all this deep meaning? It's just an excuse to have no meaning at all. I guess that's one way to look at it. Well, everyone has their own opinion. My opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out right now. Mm, you have a confident little. Uh, oh god. I don't know, first rapper, I'm maybe you a word or something. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, really hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders, so that's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross, so I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I only see her talking to people, and she probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start liking spiders too? That's so why I'm not friends with her. Doesn't matter if she has other hobbies, doesn't matter if she keeps it private, doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross, she's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers, and I'm gonna tell everyone. Um, that's not a poem. Not at all. Um, okay. Well, maybe it is, but I don't know. <laughs> That's just um. And I'm gonna tell Emmett. I don't see what she means in this one yet. No. Hmm. Amy's friends are like spiders? No. There's someone she looks at that she looks up to. You know, they have a cute singing voice. Every time she sings the chorus, my heart will pound to the rhythm of the words. But there's something that is about this Amy girl that she actually really is not liking and so she avoids it or she turns her away doesn't matter if she helps her she just she pushes away those who care about her yeah you're right oh hmm not bad right it's quite a lot longer than yesterday's yesterday was well too short I was just warming up I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. Nah, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this part. <sighs> I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it really helps people realize how stupid they're being. Look, everyone would agree that the subject of this problem is an ignorant jerk. Do you really know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks of my... It's about how everyone thinks my... It doesn't matter. It could be about anything. What was she going to say? I don't know. She was about to spill it. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird habit or guilty pleasure. She's writing about Yuri. Mm-hmm. Something that you're afraid of people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. She knows Amy's, uh, yeah, Yuri's secret. 
Yeah. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares that someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking real things. She is so talking about Yuri. Yeah. We wrote about something similar tonight. Uh huh. Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I don't really get it, but she said something similar to you. People shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, you're as pretty good, so I wouldn't doubt she has some other powers. She's talking. No, she's talking about herself. The whole it's poem is about herself. She has a weird hobby. Monica mentioned about her manga she keeps in the classroom. She got all defensive about it, right? Oh, right, right. So she's talking about her obsession with manga and how she feels everyone pushes her away or considers her weird for it. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. That's like he has trouble finding words. I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her road behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always help people who make me feel insecure. And you made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, sounds like she's learned her lesson. Ah, I would say so. Even though Anne's style is different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. That's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless it was a good message to take away from. Like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I want to write a good one for tomorrow, so look forward to it. Isn't uh, that what Yuri's last said? Uh, I think so. Uh, mm. Hi again, Doctor. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I'll get my poem to Monica. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your right uh, with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Ah, you can say that. <laughs> I guess so. Can't deny that she's talented. Yes, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she's when she picks up a pen. Hmm. Okay. I noticed that too. Oh, um, when she's talking about literature, it's like a light <coughs> turns on inside her. <coughs> <coughs> Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've not, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still... Defending herself like that. Defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm just kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. I get the feeling that that's a straight-out lie. 
Yeah. She, uh, yeah. Honestly, I'm thinking Monica is a little bit more jealous than she's, she's letting on. on. Yeah, she's she trying to put a quick stop to us going to get water by ourselves. Mm hmm. Like, really? Yeah, a fictional one, anyway. Oh. <laughs> Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, well there's... there's... Oh, that's not... Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, oh, there's God. not really anything wrong with that. Well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway... You want to read my poem now? Yep. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Whoa. Save me. Oh dear. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, puce, red, green, blue. An endless cacophony. Cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me? Mm hmm? This just got meta. Oh. Yeah. Okay. The poem itself is telling you what to do. The colors, they won't stop, blah blah blah. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. An endless poem of meaningless. And then just silence. But stop. Save me. Load me. Load me. Uh. Oh. It knows the game. Oh, wow. I think this is getting really weird. Yeah. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what she said. <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. Hmm. I'm sorry if you didn't like it. Nah, I never said that. That's just kind of a thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. That's... there's something more going on here. Mm-hmm. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. Right. The way I write the lines really sh short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. Mm. That feels creepy. Mm -hmm. the, the, the <laughs> shortness of the poem. The oh, 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 come on. Oh, it doesn't let me see it again. Ah. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip for the day. 
Sometimes you'll feel you'll find yourself facing a different decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. So what? Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? The game is becoming self-aware that it's a game. Uh huh. What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Oh, Thanks for listening. Chills. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for planned today, so everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Sorry, just got to save. Yeah. <sighs> That's you. Oh, is this about the festival? Uh, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like when you put together anything good, just a few bows. We just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of letting in new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We, we won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets. We can give out during the the event. Okay, that's good now. That doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P um, Monica. Yeah. We're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Oops. Uh, so so you're, did you? Uh, I think so. Each of us oh. are going to recite a poem. Oh, no. Uh, no. Uh, Sarah is putting it all, putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sarah, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You, did, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. <coughs> Do you really think that... Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I have never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys? No, Siori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Nitsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite the poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. Uh, so I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> but I still think sh we should give it our best. Well, the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. 
If we start the event and each uh, each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. Well, the more people who perform, the better we will be able to show everyone that literature is all about. Yeah. I feel I missed a word right there. No. Um, okay. It's about <clears throat> expressing oh, hang our... Hang on. Um, oh, the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Okay. There we go. It's about expressing your feelings. But... Intimate with yourself. By uh, um, being intimate with yourself. Oh um, dear. Oh my. Uh, finding new horizons. Having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share with that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know I do. I know we all do. And of all it takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem. And I know you can do it. More <laughs> it! <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri remain silent after vomiting all over the place. Sayori so looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. Well, I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... <laughs> looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. So she just vomits everywhere. Uh. Okay, fine. I guess I have to go do the double work. Oh, right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? <laughs> <laughs> Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I, I guess I don't really have a choice. That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, I hope not. Oh gosh. It'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway. Let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, no, no. Monica. This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? She does have a point. Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? And of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through a notebook to a specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. God. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <laughs> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. 
That that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Uh, Yuri is fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. <coughs> the poem is called. Yuri anxiously glances, glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. The quivering words transform to the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure and that enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins in afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. We were just so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds a palm into her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're used down for the count. Okay. I guess I'm next then. Siri hops out of the chair and cheerfully walks up to the Pope. This one's called My Meadows. My Meadow. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? Uh... Try not to think of it like you're reciting to others, other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself. Like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way it can. the best that it can the, the best that yeah. way <laughs> Sorry. yeah there you go no that's alright uh <coughs> see yeah. okay then Sayori begins to poem somehow it feels like a soft voice was made as a perfect match the poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori's it's serene and bittersweet if I were to read this on paper I probably wouldn't think much of it but hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good, um, Good job, it. Sayori! <laughs> Even the doctor liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? <laughs> it came out nicely, Sayori. <laughs> the atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Uh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, 
I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't know if you're there before the doctor. It's not like I can put who does on the road. Might as well let the doctor lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. Ow. Oh, such a taunt. That's fine, it's fine. I might as well go and get it over with. Well, it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. <laughs> I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. <clears throat> Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Hello, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. <laughs> the problem is called... <laughs> it's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting... Oh, no, it's you. <laughs> because you're presenting. Huh. Anyway, the problem's called jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, the sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when it's spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? This is for rule so You better not make me do that again. Uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be well <clears throat> easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Nasuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just horrible, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. Oop. I don't know. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming th through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what's, what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't have to be your own. I'm already presently surprised, pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, so happy she has to just bounce her chest out. <laughs> ah, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> this is a long episode. It is. Uh, I know the festival is coming. Uh, but let's try to write... Let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far. So I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, 
we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's a big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Siori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the clock. And impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Siori? Yep. Look at this, you're always doing harm to live a lot, Doc. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay. The Doctor, you don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. <laughs> I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's been a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. <laughs> Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... Uh, I mean... So I fumbles with the words. So... Let's just say that one day, Yuri has to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> ah. Yeah, let's save that. Because this kind of feels a little dangerous. Mm-hmm. Well... Uh, you mm. might as well just tell her the truth. I mean... I'd walk home with Yuri, I mean... Yeah. She asked uh, me to, so I mean... Uh -huh. I don't really tell her no. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I feel rather awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> ah, you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore. You know? Need you? You so see, I... I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm? If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. It was kind of a fault for trapping me like that with this such a weird question. I just can't lie to her. If there's something that makes her happy, I'd hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? And another one of these. Okay. Alright, so... Let's oh, see. Let's see. Um... Why, Max? Oh dear. Um... She likes yeah, it! What's that? Nothing. Right. Let's go for excitement! Damn it. No. It was Massacre. Oh. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, uh, frightening. Hmm, frightening. Yeah. Um... Uh, was it Judgment or Wrath? Wrath. Wrath, yeah. Um, lost. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, hmm. Mm. Secretive? Yep. Uh. 
Um, play. Um. I'm gonna go analysis on this one. Alright. Oh, yep. nice. Horror. Horror. Uh, <laughs> um. Hmm. A fear? Maybe. Uh, she likes big words. I'm gonna Damn it. Candy. Oh god, we got we got the midget. Yeah, um, I was first. <laughs> um, adventure. Damn. No. Wow. Determination. I remember that one. Yeah. M imagination. Mhm. Mm vivacious. Um. Mm. Broken. No, I think mm. broken is this one. Yeah, she yeah, she she seems broken. Let's do um, treasure. Alright. Damn Aren't it. Her? Okay, intellectual forgive pleasure. I think this mm. one's intellectual. Yep. Oh, yep. Anxiety? Maybe. Yep. Romance, because she's a romantic. Mm -hmm. Damn it! The other one is. Weird. <sighs> um, electricity? Either that or misery or chocolate. Electricity, oh. weird. Alright. Oh. Suicide. Oh dear. Yep. That was it. Oh dear. Alright. Um, oh man. Ah, yep, I agree. This is where we save our game. Because that's been a long day. It has actually. <sighs> oh. oh. And I have to be up in <coughs> about six hours. <laughs> Same here, roughly. So. Thank you everyone so much for watching, if you enjoy this, click the subscribe button, hit that bell, and remember to follow us. Um, it's like 1 in the morning, so I've got nothing left. Good night everyone! <laughs> good night, have a good night.